there's that old African proverb, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And so I was blessed to have a full and robust village back in Owensboro raising me. So my mom and my dad, uh, my, my mom's Rosie Tandy, and she's a, um, uh, she was a, um, a, a lab technician at Owensboro Hospital. This was before Owensboro Hospital merged with Mercy Hospital to become Owensboro Mercy. But um, she was a lab technician there. She did EKGs and, and things like that. She was um, uh, raised in Cerulean, Kentucky, which is on the border of Christian and wow. Trigg County. Cerulean. Um, yeah, down in, wow. uh, down in Christian County. Went to Christian County High School and, uh, and everything there. Um, and then my dad uh, was a school teacher, uh, was a physical education teacher and a football coach. And he grew up, he was from Owensboro. And so they were the ones is that... Is he David too? What's no, dad's my dad's name? name is Samuel Tandy. Samuel Tandy. So, we want to get and make sure that people know where yeah, you come from. So, so it's Samuel Tandy Samuel and Samuel Tandy and Rosie Tandy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, those, are, those are my parents. And, um, and, then my, and so they raised my brother, Travis, and I there in Owensboro. Um, dad was um, all-state in football and um, ran track and, and did all that, but then went to... First went to Dodge City, Kansas to go to junior college and played football there and then went to Murray State University down in Murray, Kentucky. And that's where he and mom met each other. My mom was studying to be a nurse. Uh, he was on the football team and then, um, woo -woo. <laughs> and then um, he, um, he uh, met, my, actually, so it was my mom's cousin, George Radford, who uh, was a principal, ultimately became an assistant principal at Trick County High School down in Trick County, uh, Kentucky. They were teammates together. And um, saw my mom walking across campus one time after practice, and he said, who is that? And that's how they, uh, that's how they met. And then um, I was actually, after dad graduated um, college, and mom wasn't finished yet, but they decided to get married and then moved up to Juliet, Illinois. Uh, Dad was going to play semi-pro football up there, and he worked for the electric company there, and then that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. And so then shortly after I was born, um, mom and dad moved back to Murray so dad could finish up uh, his um, college uh, education and there was a promise that was made by the superintendent of the uh, Owensboro school system that if dad had gotten his degree, he, could, he had a job waiting for him back at the school system to go teach and coach. And so that's how we ultimately ended up back in Owensboro. And so that's where, uh, you know, I kind of, I grew up, right? And so mom and dad were the ones who raised me. I went to church at 10th Street Missionary Baptist Church. This was the church that my grandfather, uh, Garfield uh, Tandy was uh, one of the original pastors of the church. As a matter of fact, the, the church where we started, where I, that I remember growing up in, was the, build, the building itself was built by him under his leadership. But I never got to meet my grandfather mm -hmm. um, nor my grandmother. They passed away uh, when my dad was real young. Like I think my grandfather passed away when my dad was six years old, and then my grandmother my uh, paternal grandmother passed away when dad was, um, he was in college, mm -hmm. so. And what were their names? So my, like I said, my grandfather's name was uh, Reverend G.T. Tandy or Garfield T. Tandy. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was Beatrice Tandy. Okay. And um, she's part of the best family from Horse Cave, uh, Kentucky. So that's, you know, a, a, a part of deep. our, yeah, in Kentucky. Um, and uh, so that's where we grew up, and that's where I, I worshiped. Now, my pastor growing up, uh, and this is part of the, where I go back to and understand my, part of my whole village, was uh, Reverend H.E. Um, Floyd, um, and he was my pastor. And Reverend, what was about Reverend Floyd was he was um, not like most pastors in Owensboro. Uh, in particular, in, in terms of uh, African American pastors, in that he was very intellectual. Um, so he had his d doctorate in divinity, and he encouraged us to, you know, to read and pursue education, and made it a big deal to graduate from high school and then go on to college and things like that. And I remember with him, uh, you know, having a lot of like philosophical and um, 
you know, just different, like, you know, deep intellectual type of conversations mm -hmm. with him. And so that was mm -hmm. part of where I could get that part of my um, in a, intellect fed by having those conversations with him and we would talk about different things. And one of the things that he would always encourage the congregation to do was to be involved in politics. And so he actually ran for public office and um, uh, actually uh, Reverend R.L. McFarland was the first African-American in, in Owensboro to win elected office in the city. But Reverend Floyd ran for, um, I think, county commissioner and he lost the race, but still seeing somebody that was real close to me go out and run, you know, put, again, put those thoughts, you know, in my head. Mm -hmm. um, so he was part of the village. And then there was Roy Blanford was our family attorney. And um, Roy was a, a, a white gentleman who, uh, my, he and my dad actually did a son swap one summer. And that's kind of how I ended up interning with him. His sons, he said he wanted his sons to learn how to work on apartments and things and houses, which my dad owned. My dad owned a bunch of different rental property there in Owensboro. And, um, and he did, but my dad knew that I wanted to go into law. And so he said, okay, well, I'll tell you what, I'll take your boys for the summer and they can come work with me. And then you take my son and then show him what it's like to be an attorney. And um, so I did, and I went with Roy and um, he would let me sit in on meetings with clients. And he just told me, he explained to me early on what attorney client privilege was. And um, so I could, I could listen to everything. I just couldn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, fine. So we would sit and I listened to him talk to his different clients. He was a divorce attorney primarily, but mm -hmm. you know, in Owensboro, you do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, we, he did that. He would take me to, um, a court with him and I would go back into what they called back then the smoke filled room, which was the room where all the attorneys would get together. And it literally was smoke filled. Cause back then, you know, you could smoke cigarettes mm -hmm. and all that type of stuff. And so, that's where you would hear them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the broker, you know, the deals to, you know, on a different case and things mm -hmm. like that. And uh, kind of see the legal process up close and, mm -hmm. you know, and personal. And that's what made me want to say, I, I, it reaffirmed that, yeah, I could be an attorney. I can, you know, I can do this, you know. And, I, and, you, your, and your story is different than, too, than a lot of the, you know, a lot of the other people in the Hall of Fame, the mm -hmm. African-Americans, because they grew up rigidly, you know, segregated. Mm -hmm. And what you're talking about would not have happened for them. Right. That's exactly right. So your father and 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 his friend, mm -hmm. this white attorney, they had a relationship. Right. That that they could swap children at mm -hmm. that time. So then, in some ways, you saw some of the benefits of the earlier struggle. You got to realize some of that earlier in terms of exposure. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you know, so that was one of the things that, you know, the, the, my parents always you know, instilled in us to be, my brother and I, you know, to be, you know, um, fiercely proud of being who we were, being African-American, but, but, but I could say equally, if not more so importantly, being, you know, recognizing that you're a Tandy and what that meant, you know? And so when you're a Tandy, you're, you're, for us, it went being, you had to be a cut above. They instilled in you that, you know, you have to do, maybe do work twice as hard to get you know, half as far, but nonetheless, you, we expect mm -hmm. excellence out of you because of who you are and whose you are. And so um, that was always, so that was a part of the foundation that was, you know, was set for me. Mm -hmm. And what um, did your brother grow up to be? So my brother is now, uh, he's here in Louisville and mm -hmm. he's at the um, University of Louisville and working mm -hmm. with uh, kids in the Upward Bound program. Mm -hmm. And so he um, is one that, um, I think out of both, both of us, you know, if, if we could be, uh, you know, teachers or working with kids, I mean, that's what we would do. He's actually, you know, doing that, and I do it more now with, with my kids, whether it be, you know, chaperoning field trips or mm -hmm. coaching ball teams or things like that. But, um, you know, we still kind of like have that, I guess, that teacher uh, DNA, uh, you know, that's in us, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but, yeah, but I was blessed to grow up there in Owensboro, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of people who, um, fed in, you know, and seeded into me. So I had the black community mm -hmm. and that was the part I think I realized early on about how to be a social chameleon. When they talk about in, that, in the black community how we have to be social chameleons mm -hmm. and learning how to you function in the in the African American community, yeah, and then mm -hmm. you can function in the white community. Mm -hmm. I learned that in Owensboro mm -hmm. how to do 
both mm -hmm. and you're, you know, can go back and forth and really relate to each other. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's where the, the seeds of the, the idea I always say to people, you know, uh, country cooking and soul food are the same things. We just call them different, you know, different things. Mm -hmm. But at their core, it's mm -hmm. the same. And um, that's what I learned growing up in Owensboro. So um, what was funny, I went to two school systems in Owensboro. We lived in the county system. So I went to Stanley Elementary School, which is no longer there anymore, but it's in Stanley, uh, Kentucky, and that's out in the country. So I literally would get on the school bus and it would go way out <clears throat> into, or it seemed way out into the, uh, you know, into the county and that's where I went to school. Mm -hmm. And I was usually the only black kid in my class. There was like, I think in our whole school there were maybe 10 of us in the school. Mm -hmm. No, I think it, there were five of us because it was the Currys and myself and then uh, Erica Wells was there. And the, you could name them. Yeah, you could basically name them. <laughs> it was about like five, maybe seven total mm -hmm. um, at our school. And um, and you didn't have any trouble? I no. Mean, you, you weren't? Mm -hmm. Nah, we didn't have any, Yeah, we really didn't have any trouble mm -hmm. uh, with anything. Um, you know, while I was there, it was just, I knew that, I knew that I was the only black kid, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and you knew uh, you were a Tandy. And I knew I was a Tandy <laughs> and then, you know, and all that. But, um, we really didn't have too much trouble. I, I feel like I was truly blessed because I felt like there was always, um, I always felt like God had his hand on me and was kind of like guiding me and like, have this teacher, don't do this teacher, you know, that type of thing. And it, it just always, it worked itself out, right? Mm -hmm. And the guidance and the teachers that I had, you know, were the right ones for me. Mm -hmm. And they would always encourage me and kind of and brought me along. And so I went that way through um, the county system at Stanley Elementary and then Burns Middle School. And then in high school, I wanted to play for my dad for football, which mm -hmm. you know, he was in the city system. And that's where most of the black kids went to school. And so then I came into the city system uh, for high school. And so now, I mean, I could go to two different class reunions if I wanted to <laughs> for, for the city and the, for Apollo High School and for Owensboro High School because mm -hmm. those were the kids that I grew up, you know, I grew up and with. And you did play football. And I did play football in high school and I was all state, uh, mm -hmm. first team all state. And a matter of fact, I played for the same coach that my dad had in, um, in high school, which mm -hmm. was Gerald Pointer. Uh, Gerald has since passed away, but Gerald, it was when my dad was playing, he was the first a team that my dad, that he coached was my dad's team. Then he stopped coaching for a while. Then when I came in, then he came back to be head coach. And then my brother and I played for him. And this is at? A, at Owensboro High School. At Owensboro High at School. At Owensboro Senior High School, yeah. So you get, now were you popular in school because you were a Tandy? Well, were you popular no. just because you were a football player? Because you know, your mom met the you yeah. know, football player and. I, you know, so what was interesting is, um, For me in high school, I really didn't date anybody in high school. I had one girlfriend in high school, but I really didn't date anybody. Um, middle school, it was kind of like, so of course, you know, you're in middle school, you're kind of coming into yourself. But I recognized there too, you're the black kid. There weren't a lot of interracial dating happening then, and I'm the only one there. So. so <laughs> that wasn't happening. So like in your stereotypical movies where there's the one black friend that's yeah. hanging out at the party, so I was that dude. The friend. You know, I was the black guy and they're just kind of hanging around. So that dating was not an option for me. When I came into the city, it was at the school where there were more African Americans that were there, I wasn't the kid to date because I was Mr. Tandy's son. And so, so it I was, was a burden. Of yeah. So, so you were, you were Mr. Tandy's son. So, and my dad was known as being, he was the rough guy, the rough, gruff coach there, not the, the one to be messed with. So, mm -hmm. you know, nobody wanted to be a part of that, want to deal with that. And then I was also the only one like in your AP classes and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't, you know, what happened. So for me, I mean, I would, um, I really didn't date a lot mm -hmm. in high school, 
And so it was like, but I always knew, and that's where part of Raised always raised too, is they knew there was something more outside of Davis County. Mm -hmm. There was more outside of Kentucky. And so I was always encouraged, go, go elsewhere. Beyond.